<laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome back to Theme Park Wizard. And today we have some special guests. George from Disney Family, Family Man 23, and Chris from Orange Go 55. What's up? What's How's going on? Going? Yeah, definitely check out their channels. They're pretty good. Speaking of that, when are you going to release a new video, Disney Family Man? I know you've been kind of busy. Yeah, it's soon. I, I know I keep on saying I'm going to release another one, but um, I had to kind of scale back on uh, finances right now because with me being laid off with all the craziness, I kind of had to cut some things. But uh, soon I will be back up, I promise. <laughs> cool. I'll be waiting. And it's going to be uh, the the transition because in, a next, in the next year, we are going to be moving to Florida. So I will have Walt Disney World in my backyard. So that's pretty much going to be my main focus with my oh, vlogs. Wow. How far away are you going to live from it? I am going to be 20 minutes away from Animal Kingdom. Well, that's wow. closer than I am to Disneyland. <laughs> in fact, that's closer than I am to Universal. That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jealous because Animal Kingdom is my favorite. Oh, it is oh. my favorite. It is my out of Walt Disney World. It's my favorite park out of the four. Like that's so cool, man. Well, this corona, this quarantine is insane. People, they close all the parks and all the construction stopped. It's terrible. But what? Um, so, what do you think? What's your best guess? about when they were going to reopen. Hmm. You want to well, do that one, Chris? <laughs> so I'll, I'll start it off. I'll start it off. Um, my best guess right now <laughs> is I think that, uh, I think June, maybe July at the latest. I, I think that's kind of where we're at right now. But again, this can change. You know, I mean, if there's, if, the, if we see another huge spike in a month of, of, of these cases, you know, it might be longer. I hope not. I mean, I don't know how much longer the company can withstand this kind of financial loss. It kind of worries me. Already, June and July is kind of cutting it a little bit. It's kind of pushing <laughs> it. But um, I think that's realistically when it's going to open. So I, I don't know. What, what do you th What do you guys think? Well, for me, um, I'm going to be a little bit of the Debbie Downer here. Um, but, but this is just my opinion. I don't. I don't know anything about it i don't know as but just my opinion based on what i've heard that all cast members are going to be temporarily laid off starting april 19th for me i think that's a little bit too close of a call for the summer months that they're going to lay off all the cast members and then within eight weeks to then eight to ten weeks that they're going to rehire everybody which it, there is a possibility but it also puts it in the back of my mind that disney's not even for sure how long this is going to go on and they can't as much as they want to keep on you know paying their cast members they can only do that for so long and i think as far as a tourism standpoint summer is the the hottest time no pun intended that <laughs> <laughs> that uh that people love to travel and go on vacation and i wonder if disney is thinking of it as not as a positive but as a negative that as soon as everything is in the clear and they open everything up for the summer months everybody rushes at the same time and that could possibly start a whole nother set of uh uh viruses that people contract. So for me, I, I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I want to be wrong. But for some reason, I'm like leaning more towards September. Wow. Now, did you guys, I don't know if you saw this, but did you, did you guys get a chance to check out the Barron's article today with Bob Iger? He, he was saying that um, there's going to, there's, there, there, there's going to be some changes coming to Disney parks when they do reopen and they're considering doing temperature checks mm -hmm. you know they're going to check your bag they'll probably scan your forehead if you have a temperature you're not getting in that's pretty interesting i did wow, read it I, yeah. actually, I did not... I... oh, oh sorry oh, keep going no it's right. yeah, I, didn't... I actually just got done reading it and i thought it was um very interesting because 
Um, I mean, just like with me, yes, I do believe. Um, now, just so you know, I'm not bashing TSA at all, you know, with the airlines and everything. You know, they still, I mean, there are things that I feel that they go a little bit too extreme. But at the end of the day, they're doing their job and they're trying to keep everybody safe. So if it takes a couple seconds that they have someone standing out there that they want to check somebody's temperature, you know, to make sure that no one is foolish enough to go in there with a fever and to keep everyone healthy, I say if they want to do it, so be it. I, I agree. And a lot of people are criticizing Disney saying like, well, is this enough? Is this going to prevent, you know, someone who is asymptomatic, has no symptoms, no fever from infecting people? Well, well, no, it's not. But at the same time, it's not realistic for Disney to, to basically, you know, perform full physicals <laughs> of every person coming into the resort. I mean, it has, there, it has to be a fairly quick thing to get people in and out and move the line. So, um, I think this is the best option that the temperature check is the best thing they can do to kind of screen somebody kind of get an overall idea of what this person uh, coming in might be bringing into the park. And, you know, it's the best they can do. It's the best well, they but, can do. Well, especially because a lot of people were saying that, Oh yeah. Who's going to come in with a fever. Who's going to come in with symptoms that for me, I think that there would be a lot of people to know that they're, they're on vacation. They traveled, they spent, X amount of money that I think that regardless of how they feel, they would take themselves to the park one way or the other. And Probably, I think, especially if they, yeah, they spend all that money and just do it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And the good thing now about these temperature checks is it'll make people think twice. You know, if, if someone has a vacation booked, you know, coming up and, um, and their child has a 102 degree temperature, they're going to think, well, maybe we should reschedule where before they might go, Oh, well, you know, we'll, we'll just, we'll just, we'll just go anyway. Now, at least now they're a little worried because if Disney checks, they might get turned away. Now that you say that Christopher, now that just actually made me wonder on Disney's behalf being of what has happened. I wonder if they're going to have some sort of leniency towards people that if they have a vacation package and they're already so many days out, and something happens medically where somebody gets not, I'm not saying like the sniffles, but I'm more saying like a fever, a virus where they'll have some sort of stipulation to where they can not get a full refund, but maybe change dates, maybe something more that they haven't done before, but because of what has happened that Disney will now have a certain stipulation to say, Hey, even though, you're already how many days out for your vacation. If this is what happens, we can somewhat assist with that. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. That's a really good point. And, and, and I'm also wondering what is going to be the, 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 the benchmark, so to speak. Like if you go there and they, and they scan your forehead and it's 99.2, I mean, is that technically a fever because it's higher than 98.6? And well, what's going to be the threshold? you know, for mm -hmm. having a fever, you know, cause some people, honestly, some people just run hot or some people yeah, kind of run, true. run under. So if someone's 99 and that's their normal, are they going to have trouble getting in? That's, that's a good point. I feel like it should be like at least a hundred, like a hundred point zero. You know, I feel like that would be like a normal, a good benchmark. I think once that they figure out what they really want to do and they officially announce it and rubber stamp it and say, Hey, this is what we're doing. I think that's when we'll get a more clear focus on number wise for like, what is the cutoff? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> now I heard from when you get inside the park, um, there'll be potentially some <laughs> changes, like more like hand sanitizer things that they've been putting in. But also, on the Disneyland app, you guys probably have the update the Disney World app, there's a spot of virtual queues, like multiple virtual queues, meaning they might put uh, multiple rides with virtual queue instead of just Rise of the Resistance. Um, most people were probably thinking it's for the Spider-Man, which it probably is, but they probably now they can add as many rides to virtual queue as possible for the time being to try to have people be in the lines as few like, as possible. 
Well, and one ride in particular that I would I would almost guarantee we get a virtual queue is Indiana Jones, and and mm -hmm. I'm only saying that because that queue, as impressive as it is, is extremely claustrophobic and tight, mm -hmm. and that would be a total petri dish of virus um, contamination. I mean, in those little cramped caves and everything, being stuck mm -hmm. with people. Yeah. Yeah, I can't see them just letting people pack in there when the park reopens. I would guarantee that Indiana Jones is going to get a boarding pass system. I personally feel that I think all of the major e-ticket or popular attractions are going to somewhere down the road get that system if that's what Disney decides to do. Because I think... Well, first of all, I think when they first open, I personally feel that not every ride and attraction is going to open up at once. I think that they're going to have soft phase openings, like maybe a couple lands at a time. So that, and possibly maybe change the number of guests that go into the park, like what will make the max. Yeah, I think I heard they're trying to do that. maybe a half capacity so that way they can like restaurants um they can like you know have every other table people sit at every other table on the outdoor portions they cut them off and then uh i, I would do everything by half right. <laughs> which brings up an interesting question at least especially for disneyland disneyland has a lot of annual pass holders so i feel like they have so many that will that comfort will that well, annual passwords by themselves to make up like half the population. Like, well, I was well. thinking, I was thinking like, wow, there's so many annual passwords. Maybe it should be like annual passwords only when they first reopen, you know? But I don't know how well, many there are. Well, I think that if they do decide to go half capacity, I personally feel that they're probably going to up the price for the reason that being that there's not going to have as many guests in the park at once you're going to have shorter lines shorter waits so what are they going to possibly do especially with them bringing in no revenue right now for the parks yeah and they would raise the prices because it's you're basically getting half the amount of people in there each day well and also another another thing to consider too is like attractions like small world and pirates where they cram people into a little tiny boat what's going to happen with that are, are, are they going to have only like four people per boat? Each person gets their own row. <laughs> like, what are they going to do? I mean, you know, you're so tightly packed into some mm -hmm. of these ride vehicles with complete strangers. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but I think even when the parks reopen, I'm going to go to the parks when they reopen, probably the first week. I'm going to try to get in there, but um, yeah. I'll probably still wear a mask. I'll be completely honest mm -hmm. with you. I probably will. Because, you know, when they reopen, they're not, the Corona thing isn't going to be gone completely. Right. There's still going to be cases. This Corona thing isn't going to be gone really until we get a vaccine and the FDA isn't going to improve that for another year or 18 months. So I, I, yeah, I'll probably still wear a mask for, you know, and just kind yeah. of play it safe. Yeah. And, and kind of piggybacking on what you were saying, Christopher, with you saying like pirates and it's a small world. I mean, even think of the parades, the fireworks and uh, the character meet and greets because a lot of the characters are um, like face characters. Face right? characters, exactly. Mm -hmm. So I I think that they may not even have face characters for a while. Me personally, yeah, I, heard, I heard all those three of those things won't be happening for at least maybe the first four to six months after the open. Yeah, the fireworks, the parades, and the, the yeah, that's yeah, that's going to take a while before, especially the fireworks and the parades, because yeah, I mean, those packing talk a whole about bunch of people. I mean, because when everyone like rushes on Main Street, you are literally shoulder to shoulder. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. I can't imagine them doing like the big firework shows every night when they reopen. I mean, Main yeah. Street, you would infect so many people. I mean, <laughs> it, it would be insane, you know? The cases would jump from one to 1,000 in seconds. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, it would, be, it would be a disaster. I mean, they're definitely going to – like this whole thing about reopening the parks, they're not just going to reopen and it's going to be business as usual. There's no way. 
Yeah, there's going to no. be like we've all mentioned. There's going to be so many changes. Mm-hmm. I think there's definitely going to be limits to you know like um, entertainment because they don't want large crowds gathering. There's going to be limits to how many people can board a vehicle, how many people can enter the park. There's going to be so many different things that are implemented. That you know the temperature checks and mm-hmm. various things like that. It's going to be pretty wild. And going back to kind of what you guys said with the boats and everything, I feel like. Hmm. Like let's say there's a maybe they'll do like families, so each family gets a road, and they'll like you know maybe tape off or like separate a row. Like for the pirates, there's like five rows, so maybe like two families per boat. One person, one family gets the front, one gets the back, and the middles they can. So I don't know if that's six feet in between, but it's better than nothing. I feel like maybe they'll try to attempt to do something. And that's like why that. I feel that they would probably go the route of having half capacity because if they end up good doing that route it's going to take even twice as long as it normally will to mm-hmm. get people on and off each ride because you're yeah, not filling the vehicles full capacity yeah i you know one thing for sure is the matterhorn is not going to be a, a fun experience <laughs> with coronavirus oh, you're, yeah. so, you're so tight with everyone in your bobsled you better <laughs> you better make sure that no one has coronavirus in your bobsled true this is probably the only situation where autopia kind of wins because everyone has their own car it's like driving on your own car so yeah that's actually a good point now that's probably where autopia is going to have 140 minute wait when the <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like it's so you're right operating at full capacity. And it's and it's like an open air vehicle, so the yeah. germs kind of dissipate. It's not a, it's okay. not like a claustrophobic situation, but so. it's funny it's funny now how much our mindsets have changed though since this whole thing. Like mm-hmm. I'm not really um like a germaphobe. Like mm-hmm. I, I don't really like stress over like germs so to speak every single day like this, but now that we've had this whole COVID-19 we're all kind of thinking and looking through the the lens of like infection, right? Like yeah. every attraction is, is kind of like seen through that lens now. It's like a whole mm-hmm. new perspective that we all kind of have. It's kind of interesting. Well, and speaking of the, the Autopia, especially the one down at Walt Disney World, I mean, if you don't get sick from the coronavirus, you'll definitely get sick from inhaling the, the gas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Definitely. definitely. <laughs> Autopia was like uh, was probably uh, rooting for this day it's like yes I can't get demolished now because I'm the only ride that's rideable <laughs> <laughs> oh and Radio Springs Racers I feel like families of six well, they get their own car so I feel like that would be like a pretty big and, and if you really think about it too what's going to happen with the single rider lines because with single oh, yeah. rider you have to be partnered with somebody you don't know and you're yeah. sitting with people you don't know. So, I mean, I, I think even if they were to keep the single rider line, I don't really think no one would go in it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't either. Yeah. Everyone's taking a chance, at least not for the short time. Like I think that this whole situation is going to be kind of like a nine 11 event where like, I think the months and even maybe year after things open, things are going to be extra, extra tight. And eventually over time, as the years go on and, and we put it further and further behind us, I think things will normalize a little more. But those first few months and even in the first year, it's going to be total paranoia mode. I mean, no one's going to want to sit next to anybody. No one's going to want to stand next to anybody. It's going to be so weird. So with me, especially with going out to Disneyland, because I mean, majority of the time when I – have my Disneyland trips, I go solo. So I go by myself. So whether I stand in a 15 minute line for the single rider line, or if I wait in a 60 minute line, one way or the other, I'm sitting next to somebody I don't know. So (laughs) if ever I'm out there when all this is said and done, then it just comes down to it. They have to give me my very own uh, uh, set of vehicles. So if I'm going on the... (laughs) I get that whole train to myself and then, they oh. go and then everyone else could load in. <laughs> you know, I, I want to kind of go off on a little bit of a tangent. Well, it's related, but it's a little bit of a tangent. I want to ask you guys your viewpoint on this. I keep hearing on the news that if you, they want everyone to wear a mask, right? Mm-hmm. But the thing is they, they, they keep emphasizing that the mask is only there to, is 
is to prevent other people in your area from catching it in case you have it. It doesn't prevent you from getting the disease, right? Correct. Yeah, no, though. But why, why not, though? Like, I don't understand. Like, if, if, okay, so if the mask is powerful enough to block mm -hmm. the virus from going out, why can't the mask prevent it from coming in? Yeah. That's the thing that kind of blows my mind. Do you guys have an answer to that? I was kind of wondering. What I've heard, and I could be wrong, but what I've heard that if it, if it absorbs water, if any item or any type of material absorbs water, things can latch and get in and surpass that material. Oh, okay. All right. And then you're just also, kind of breathing in. Yeah. Yeah. And also, like, if someone, like, you know, that's why I say, like, don't shake hands and someone, like, you have a mask and someone, like, coughs still, and then that gets on your hand, you can still answer that way and stuff, and anywhere basically on your skin. So that's why I, I say, like, don't shake hands. But the mask does help from going, like, outwards. Well, and it's even, like, with people that wear um, gloves. Like, I've seen, I've been into um, a grocery store couple times very quickly you know while this is happening and they're wearing the gloves and they're pushing the carts <laughs> but then they're going and <laughs> the fruits and vegetables with those same gloves and yeah that's, mm, like, well, that's everything terrible. that you just touched with the cart with the glove <laughs> oh god it, it was like contaminated all that yeah, th those aren't th th those gloves are not antiviral in the sense where the virus doesn't like automatically die the minute you touch yeah. it. Like you still have to be careful. You know, you can't just touch everything and assume. Oh, okay, cool. I got gloves on. Yeah. I mean, me personally, I think as far as with produce, they should just put them in like in a claw machine. And you <laughs> <laughs> That'd be kind of fun, actually. Imagine like the broccoli. You're just catching the broccoli. You put it. In. That's funny. <laughs> oh yeah, and you put some money in going to claw machine then it should be like it, it just randomly chooses whatever you can pick up that's what you get <laughs> that's what you get <laughs> oh, man. now question because i know california is on lockdown but i know not every state's on lockdown so is george where you are are you guys like on lockdown the stay at home thing is that like effective or are you just doing it? they are strongly um suggesting to us to stay at home to be outside as little as possible we are still allowed to go like on walks and stuff but just don't be around um crowds of people and if you have to keep your distance six feet apart as possible but as of right now it's not a uh well, like a mandatory yeah. well see me, me and me and uh me and ethan we got governor newsom and newsom is on it Every yeah. day, oh, yeah. we got some new like, thing we can't do. <laughs> <laughs> First weekend after this happened, the people in LA County were packing the beaches and the trails, and they said, you can go out, but not in groups. So then they closed all the beaches and trails. I'm like, well, yeah. They moved. Love it. Sorry, Zoom sent me something. Um, they removed the 40-minute time limit or something. Cool. Uh, anyway. Um, but yeah, so they closed all the beaches and the trails because <laughs> everyone's so funny. They just literally, you should have seen pictures. They all, like a hundred people on, run, you know, Runyon Canyon, Chris, they all, a hundred people, like, were <laughs> just on the trail. Like, you can walk, not like together. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's crazy, man. It's oh crazy. God. Well, at least with, with uh, Kevin Rafferty, uh, the Imagineer, at least he can step outside on his balcony and see the peak of Matterhorn Mountain every day at his house. So. Nice. Nice. Yeah, yeah so I, cool. I would love to live that close. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I've been watching sometimes the Matter Cam on YouTube from that hotel. They have that camera and it just pans around the Disneyland Resort just over and over again for 24 hours. Sometimes I just have it on just to feel like I'm over there. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the, the one thing I did a video recently on, on like the bright side of things, right? It's like the silver lining. And there's <laughs> one thing that you really, um, that I think we all can appreciate now. Like as annual pass holders, we sort of take the perks for granted. And now I think everyone is sort of finding like a newfound appreciation for these parks you know it's like they're there it is it is a treat to be able to go to these places you know and we sort of take it for granted you know we go every weekend or we go even twice or three times a month and it becomes like the mall right after a while you become so desensitized but really you know what i mean 
now we kind of, I think now with this whole coronavirus thing, we're sort of like looking, like stepping back and kind of like, wow, you know what? We are pretty lucky to be able to experience these parks. I think when we get back into it, we're really going to take them for, we're really going to appreciate them more than we ever have. That, that's a blessing, at least, I think, you know? Mm -hmm. I really miss that popcorn. Mm. And a churro. The first time you get a popcorn and a churro. <laughs> and it'll be a perfect time for me to get on the rise of the resistance because I feel like it won't sell out in 30 seconds. <laughs> oh yeah. I think I think the first like um I would say the first month or a couple months even, I think the lines, the crowds are gonna be well, I don't know. I, see, it's yeah, weird. Here in California, we have the annual pass way. holders, and I they just can... don't know if it's going to – I don't know. I would think <laughs> that it would be, like, a little bit slow, but who knows, you know? Yeah. Yeah. With this, it can go either way because a lot of people were saying, you know, with Galaxy's Edge, oh, it's going to be crowds of people. You know, you're not going to be able to move. And then Galaxy's Edge, you were able to go in – and walk around and get on Smuggler's Run in less than 30 minutes. You know, I mean, now that Rise is open, you know, that kind of blew that out of the water. But it just makes you think that anything really can happen. It could either be really crowded or it can be really dead. You just, yeah. you just never know. Yeah, it's really weird. Like, that whole thing with Galaxy's Edge really surprised me. I mean, it surprised everybody. I mean, everyone was kind of thrown off a little bit by that. And mm -hmm. who knows what this is going to be when it reopens. I mean, I think there's a lot of pent-up demand. I think people are itching to go back. But are they going to be okay with going back? Are they going to feel safe going back? We'll see, you know? Yeah, it's very... <laughs> but I don't know if they're probably... Because I know uh, in Shanghai, the the hotel in Disney Town part is open. So I wonder if they're going to start the same thing here with that when they want to. Like, they're just going to open Downtown Disney first and the hotels and then the theme park or if they're just going to open it all at once with the restrictions. It's going to be very interesting because I know the uh, none of the other theme parks, like some other theme parks in Shanghai are open. Like, they reopen, like, and even Japan, Legoland, you or Japan will be open, but all the major ones still seem to be closed which is for some reason. It's very interesting. Well, you know, I, I, um, I, I'm very doubtful. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be as nice as possible because of YouTube <laughs> policies, but I'm, I'm very, I'm very doubtful of of the Chinese um, government's uh, numbers. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm <laughs> really, really doubtful because if you don't, if you're not testing everybody, then no one has coronavirus, right? Like, yeah. it, it just, I just, <laughs> I, I just feel like there's some shenanigans going on there a little bit. And it, mm. it, it kind of, I don't know, something's fishy. Yeah, it is hard to tell when, uh, you know. Yeah, it's almost like people kinda, don't tell the truth all the time. It's almost like uh, kind of I'm holding back to say, okay, phew, I could have a sigh of relief. You know, they don't have any, but it, it's kind of hard to tell with that notion. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's it's difficult. It's a it's a weird situation. It makes me kind of question how they re are starting to reopen things over there, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it's weird. The reopen the movie theater has been about a week later. They closed them all again, citing an increase in case or uh, uh, a second wave. I'm like, hmm, I don't know. Was it, was it really ever gone? Who knows? Well, at least here, when things will be open, I feel you know they'll be for sure certain that they'll be decline the flattening of the curve as they say well it's like even with the the jungle cruise movie with uh the rock i mean that got pushed a whole year because oh of yeah you know uh, marvel needed a place to go huh well the marvel slate just got pushed back entirely the marvel, Un the marvel universe just got all kinds of jambled up. Thanos did another click of his finger on that. <laughs> Switch. And Artemis Fowl is going on Disney Plus. Interesting. That movie got pushed back so many times it's like, just release yeah. it on Disney Plus already and just be done with it. Like, rip yeah. <laughs> some of these movies some of these movies that, they, that Disney doesn't have too much faith in I think they're just yeah. going to cut their losses and just throw it on a Disney Plus. Artemis Fowl is one of them. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of the Fox movies that are already in the pipeline get thrown on to either Disney Plus or Hulu. Because mm -hmm. um, the Fox properties that were, and it's not Disney's fault, really. I mean, a lot of these Fox movies, they inherited. And I think that a lot of them, I mean, I know a lot of them haven't done well. 
you know, and I think that they're going to be kind of uh, hesitant to release a lot of them in theaters. And um, they'd rather free that space up in theaters for their Marvel stuff that they know will do well or, or, their, or their Pixar stuff or what have you. So I bet a lot of the, the Fox stuff in the pipeline gets thrown on a Disney Plus. And speaking of that, did you guys like, did you see Onward? And did you like Onward? I watched it the other day. I thought it was a great movie. Uh, oh, did I lose you? Well, I haven't actually seen it yet. I want to. I, I actually thought it, I, you know, I was at the D23 panel for the studio and, and what they showed mm -hmm. us was like the first, I think like 15 minutes of the movie or something like that. And it was really cute. It seemed really emotional. Um, so I want to, yeah, I, I got to check it out. I, I've been, I, I'm on Disney Plus every single day, but I like, I watch all the old stuff. Like mm -hmm. I probably have seen like every movie from the Walt era, like three times now. It's <laughs> crazy. But I, I got to start diving into some of the news. So I got to go, I got to watch Onward. I liked it. Um, I actually got to see it in theaters uh, right before everything started closing down. Uh, I saw it on uh, Josh's birthday because we had his birthday party at the movie theater. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was good. I mean, it, for me, it's not the best Pixar movie. I think it's, it, for my, my personal opinion, it's better than The Good Dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, the poor Good Dinosaur. I feel like everyone I, you know, always rags on that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. I actually really liked The Good Dinosaur. I don't know why. I thought it was really cute. I really enjoyed that movie. But a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't like that one. And a lot of people don't like Brave either. And I, I, I no, no, like I love Brave. Brave. I, I loved, loved it. it. They, and that's actually what I was going to say. I, I like Onward better than The Good Dinosaur, but not as good as Brave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, see, so what project, especially for Disney World, so maybe, you know, George, you got this one more, but which, uh, for the 50th anniversary, yeah, there's a lot of stuff already under construction. There's a lot of stuff planned that has not begun construction. Do you think, with all the financial struggles, which projects do you think will be on hold and uh or just like canceled entirely well i think in in my opinion at least um because we were talking about this before we were recording that i thought you know this disney could take total advantage of this and turn it into a positive opportunity mm -hmm. that being that everything's closed on the parks are empty you know they can really like bang this out and get all the construction done at once so when the parks reopen you could even they don't even have to wait for the 50th they can just have everything up and running and then they said that they were canceling out all the construction and probably i'm like oh come on it's like <laughs> they can't win but it's um for me definitely the rides that are dire for the 50th anniversary like tron uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, Cosmic Rewind, uh, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. Those rides are dire for the 50th anniversary. Plus, with all three of those attractions, they're practically done. You know, so I think mm -hmm. that they're just going to take uh, the funds and budget out of things that haven't even been started yet that's still in the creative process or maybe have started but they're just kind of pulling it away for right now and finishing up the, the major attractions that are done. And I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for this because I know a lot of people were waiting for the Star Wars uh, Galactic Star Cruiser um, experience, um, the, the, or AKA the Star Wars Hotel right outside of Galaxy's Edge. But for me, I have no problem with them putting that one on hold because based on what the price is going to be just for a two or three, a two night, three day experience, that's probably going to be something I'm probably not going to experience right away anyway. So for me, I'd rather them put the funds into something that I know that I can experience for the 50th uh, in the parks itself. And I would take Tron and Guardians of the Galaxy and even Ratatouille over that any day. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you, George. I, I think that everything and, and I'm going to kind of kind of give the Disneyland perspective of that. But I agree with your overall opinion where like you were saying that I, that the stuff they started construction on 
that they're probably they're going to follow through with that and the stuff that they haven't started construction on they're going to um you know kind of put that on the back burner and i think the same can be said for disneyland i think it's going to be the same idea i think obviously avengers campus it's it's too far along you, you, yeah. you can't cancel it they're, they're going to finish it is it going to be delayed probably but they're going to finish it uh, i was so um, ex- upset with that because i thought yes we have an opening date for avengers campus july 18th <laughs> yeah <laughs> No. <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna that's not gonna happen now, you know. And then um even think Mickey's Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway um is too far along. They've already demolished backstage areas, they've already started digging a foundation and building mm-hmm. that attraction. It, it the shovels have already hit the dirt. It's it's gonna happen. That that mm-hmm. attraction they're gonna finish it. No, but the my- stuff that's the stuff that's in question though is gonna be like the Avengers E ticket and things like that that haven't been touched yet that are just still just on paper you know yes and now with my opinion with disneyland this is what i think that they're going to do that they're they're going to obviously finish the avengers campus i feel that they're even going to do mickey and minnie's runaway railway because not only is the foundation pretty much set for it but it's now an attraction that has already been made so all they have to do is just replicate more so the interior of how they did at Hollywood Studios. So there's not really a whole lot of, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's definitely still going to cost a dime and a penny to build it, (laughs) but they don't have to go through like different and newer technology to create a new attraction. This is something that's already now previously made. But I also feel that because we were also talking about rumors of how, you know, eventually they're going to do a redo for Tomorrowland and a Fantasyland expansion. I think as of right now, they're probably going to even hold off of those even longer just till revenue starts coming back in with the parks. But I feel in the meantime, I think this is Disneyland's great opportunity, especially since you guys don't really have as Walt called it, the blessing of size uh, that Walt Disney World has that I think now would be the time to start doing some of the smaller things, like updating the attractions that are already there with the newer technology, like with um, how they're doing right now with Snow White's Scary Adventures, but now possibly maybe do it with Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, Pinocchio, those kind of things. Yeah, no, that's, that's a great point, George. Yeah, I would love them to do that. I would love them to go from, you know, do, you know, hit all the classic attractions at the park, you know, beautify them, freshen them up. Why not? You know, this is the perfect, like you said, the perfect time to do that. Um, even, even other things like, you know, um, you know, the people mover tracks, you know, they're never going to put anything else on those tracks. You might as well get rid of them. And when, you know, it would be a great opportunity when the park reopens to go ahead and address that, you know, depending on how the crowds are, you know, I don't know how, how crazy it's going to be, but um, yeah, I think they should focus on stuff like that. Put the big stuff, the big expansions like the fantasy land expansion and the new tomorrow land as a whole on hold, but work on little things that you can touch now, you know, little dark rides, little attractions, little pluses, little things here and there that you can touch touch up right now i think that'd be a great idea i think it's a great approach for at least the first like year or so while they kind of get their feet you know while they kind of get their feet back on the ground and kind of get you know up to par again the one (laughs) attraction that i am very disappointed with that i know that it's definitely going to be uh delayed big time and i'm i'm probably thinking maybe like four or five plus years um and i could be wrong again i hope i'm wrong is the mary poppins attraction and cherry tree lane that's supposed to be expanded into the uh, uk pavilion at epcot but um on that i'm more so worried about just epcot as a whole because with now with them already in the process of doing you know the demolition of the um interventions and um doing the foundation that i don't know really how much is going to be done in time for the 50th so uh when i was on the last uh, episode of the grand circle tour podcast which i am uh part of that we were talking about how there's a possibility that Epcot will be done for Epcot's 50th, not necessarily just Walt Disney World's 50th, but 
Epcot as a park during their 50th anniversary that Epcot would have all their um, enhancements done. Oh yeah, that's true. Well, that that's interesting. Yeah, that that's pretty interesting. How how old right now? Epcot what Epcot opened in 1981? 82. So 82. 2022 would be the right. Yeah. Well, what year was that? You said I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I think 2022, right? Wait, yeah, 2022. Yeah, 2020 yeah. 2022 will be the 50th anniversary. Okay. Makes sense then. It's only yeah. two years away. That, that That's probably honestly what they're going to do. They're going to celebrate Walt Disney World's 50th, and, at, you know, and it'll be a big anniversary, a big party. And then they're going to do Epcot's 50th as a separate situation. And plus, that's beneficial for Disney because then they get two celebrations instead of just one. And they can kind of, you know, kind of milk it, <laughs> basically, you know? Yes. Because I know, uh, Ethan, you were because you posted some things about, you know, when will the Moana attraction at Epcot happen? You know, yeah. and I really think that's when it's going to, they say 2021 and it's still a possibility mm -hmm. because that's something I really don't think that they need a whole lot of funds for. But I think as far as everything goes with the new Epcot, I think 2022 rather than rush it in a year, take the two years and finish it off for, uh, Epcot's 50th. Now, do you think everything would of Epcot least, well, they'll still build everything, like the Festival Center and the and the Mary Poppins. Is it going to be a walkthrough or a carousel or what, what's that going to be? Well, this, gonna they, said, they said it was supposed to be um, Cherry Tree Lane. They're going to extend into the UK Pavilion. And then the attraction is supposed to be um, you enter the queue, which is inside the bank's house. And then nothing else was said about what the attraction is. And that's why it's still in the creative state. So that's why I'm thinking it's going to be, uh, I mean, they didn't even lay any foundation down for that yet. So, oh, yeah, no. but I think, do I think that it's going to be completely taken off the page completely like they did the main street theater? No, I still feel that they're going to do, uh, Cherry Tree Lane. They're still going to do the um, the festival. Excuse me, the festival building, and um, the Moana attraction. I, I feel that they're still going to all do that, but I think it's going to be a major um, delay. You know the the the, the festival um, the festival building or whatever um, that I feel very confident they're going to build. And and there's one reason, and it's kind of a cynical reason. But I think it's kind of on point in that they're going to push a lot of alcohol sales with that festival building, you know, and I think mm -hmm. that they're going to make a lot of money on that venue. So I think for that reason and that reason alone, um, they're not going to cut it. I, I, cut I agree it. with you because think of it, Disney literally just broke every role that we all know and grew up on that we could actually take alcohol into a park sit on a bench and huh. drink it and it doesn't have to be in a paper bag <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me ask you fellas one thing i this is it's on topic but it's a little bit of a tangent but i've been a proponent i don't mind alcohol in disney parks i wouldn't even care like a lot of people got upset when they had alcohol at galaxy's edge at disneyland it didn't bother me at all um but what are your guys' thoughts on that? Like, what do you what are your take on alcohol in the parks? Do you think that they, it's not appropriate? What, what what are your feelings on it? Oh, I uh, particularly don't really care. You know, it's just like another drink. But as long as you don't go overboard and you know, like <laughs> flat out drunk, then you have to just get kicked out. But I feel like you know, most people can handle their stuff. They can just drink, and then you know. Throw it away. I feel like no, and yeah. there haven't really been any problems as you see. Since I don't think there's been a single problem since the alcohol was allowed in Galaxy's Edge. And certainly, California Adventures had alcohol for almost twenty years now, and there's I feel like there's not very rarely any problems. So I think it's okay. Um. Yeah, I'm kind of in that same boat. I'm one that you know it doesn't alter my vacation. I see Disney the same exact way as I always have. Um. I think, yeah, it's, it just goes by moderation. And I think if it's tastefully done, um, 
with a little grain of salt and an olive that, um, <laughs> keep that keep it classy. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that, um, yeah, I really don't have a problem with it. I well, think it, it's, you know, done, done well. You know, a lot of people bring up the argument like, well, you know, Walt said he didn't want alcohol, but I think, I think times change, you know, I mean, Walt also allowed smoking in his park you know, and that's mm -hmm. now that's totally taboo. So yeah. should we bring smoking back because Walt said that was okay? I mean, I <laughs> yeah. changes this is my point. You know what I'm saying? I have a little bit more of a problem with smoking in the park at opposite than the drinking. And the reason why is because I have very bad asthma and allergies. So anytime I smell a a pin drop of cigarette hmm. smoke. I am like sneezing. I am like completely, literally from the chin up. I am like a mess. <laughs> well, and that's and that's a great point, George. Too is that alcohol, for the large part, and, unless someone's getting violent, which is pretty rare, but alcohol affects just that person's health, mm -hmm. that person's liver, and that's it, right? Where smoking affects everyone around them. So, yeah, I agree with you. It's a completely different situation. I mean, I do think that uh, the alcohol, I would much rather have that just because it's isolated to that person's personal decision. If that person wants to drink and that person wants to damage the liver, that's their liver, their problem. Smoking, though, when you walk by becomes your problem, too, because like mm -hmm. you said, you have asthma or, or someone's kids, you know, are exposed to it. And it's a whole different ballgame, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so that's why I'm very happy when they got rid of that smoking area because it makes walking by Thunder Mountain much ple much more pleasant now when I take that back. Well, yeah, and that, in that area, like right by Matterhorn and the yeah. Submarine Lagoon, we used to be mm -hmm. like, oh my god, I used to hate yeah. walking past there because it would it would just be a, a like a whole cloud of it, you know? Yeah, it really would. Now it's much more pleasant. I'm like, thank goodness. <laughs> and for Walt Disney World, we have like a walking path. It's sort of like on a um like a type of bridge type thing that leads into uh, Frontierland. Well, it's in Frontierland. It's by uh, Country Bear Jamboree, and it takes you along the path right beside Tom Sawyer Island, and it takes you to Splash Mountain and Big Thunder. And that particular path was just for smoking. I mean, people can pass to get through easily, like to avoid the parades and stuff, like the crowds of people. But, I mean, it was like a, uh, it was like a mushroom cloud of cigarette smoke. So I'm, I'm glad that, you know, you can actually just go there and just walk, relax, see the sights and not have to breathe in cigarette smoke. Yeah, no, totally. <laughs> and lastly here, so I did, uh, as I was telling you guys before, I did a Twitter poll on if um, they were to take away Pirates of the Caribbean and Disneyland and rethink it to something like Frozen Ever After. <laughs> What would that cause people to do? So is there anything that you would get so mad at Disney for doing that you would take a break or just never go back? Like a retheme of an attraction, uh, taking away of a show, or would you just get like upset but still keep your past and keep going? I, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, uh, I would never get to the point where like off of one attraction, I would stop going. I, like for me, like a lot of fans get like married, like mentally to like <laughs> certain things. And I don't do that. I mean, I really don't like I'm open to change, you know, and I might not like every single change, but I'm open to it. That's what Walt wanted for these parks. That was his plan for the parks. If a change happens, I don't like it, then I don't like it, you know, but I'm not going to boycott this place that I absolutely love off a of one attraction. It, 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 for me, it's not worth it. You know, I, mm -hmm. I'll just kind of, I'll get over it, you know? Um, so to answer your question in short, no, I wouldn't, it, there's nothing they can do with an attraction that's going to make me not want to go back. It, you know, uh, I still love the place regardless. Mm -hmm. I'm, the, I'm the same. Um, what Christopher said, I don't really think that they can do anything that would make me to stop like cold turkey and completely like go on a, a tangent and say, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick at Disney, you know, <laughs> for doing it. Um, because for me, I would feel if I did that, it goes everything that is represented what Disney's all about. And it's almost like an insult to Walt because he didn't want a museum. 
he didn't want everything to stay the same. So to kind of go against his wishes and his beliefs and his vision of how he wanted his parks to constantly update and change and grow that, you know, it's no matter what you do to an attraction, there's always going to be somebody that's not going to like something. Yeah. And I think Mm -hmm. you can appease everybody. Um, However, I will give a little example that I'll still go to the parks, but I would be very disappointed and I know it's kind of the total opposite pirates with Frozen but if they were to retheme the Matterhorn with Frozen and I know that they had already have a mountain already there you know it's already built for them but if they want to change the style of the Matterhorn like update the track update like how they did with the the uh the Yetis and everything the the cars that's fine but I think to take that that kind of classic attraction out, I I don't know how I would really feel about that. But again, would I still go on the ride if it became frozen? Yeah, I'd probably experience it. But like that very first uh, uh, feeling, I would be like, really? The Matterhorn? <laughs> <laughs> it would be disappointing. Yeah, I mean, th- there's no way you can get around, you know, being disappointed with a decision like that. I wouldn't be happy either if they turned mm-hmm. the, the Matterhorn into Arendelle. You know, Um, but yeah, I mean, it it just kind of comes with the territory when you have a park, especially Disneyland and and California Adventure, where we're, we're not, you know, we don't have a lot of space. It just comes with the territory that there there might be an attraction that gets rethemed or, or removed completely. That just, it just comes with, with the territory and you just kind of have, fans just kind of have to deal a little bit with that stuff. Is it sad? Yeah. Does it suck sometimes? Yeah. But I mean, at the end of the day, I still love the place. I'll always love the place. I'm never going to stop going just because of one attraction or one thing I didn't like, you know? Did they ever yeah. fix the one part of the Matterhorn? Cause when I was out there over the summer for the expo where they had that one little section blocked off because some of the, the rock work. Had... Oh yeah. That's uh, that's fixed. Oh, okay. That. Yeah, that that was that was taken. Yeah, they they did they fixed that. So that that's good news. I think that that they kind of addressed that pretty quickly because I think it was such a safety hazard. So mm-hmm. within like I think it was within like and Ethan, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was like two or three months and it was back. It, it wasn't yeah. very long. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Two or three months. Two um, or two or three months and it's back and now it's completely shut down, waiting to be used. Again. <laughs> yeah. Well, and isn't it isn't it weird how like. The, this park, especially Disneyland, because Walt Disney World closes kind of not often, but more often than Disneyland because you guys have the hurricanes. I mean, the last time Disneyland closed unexpectedly was 9 11. I mean, we're talking a long time ago, you know? And years. now, not only is it closed, but it's, it's been closed extended. for years. Yeah. I mean, how weird is that? Well, it's still so weird. I think it's only been, I think it's never been closed more than one day, right? For this, yeah, I don't think it's ever been closed unexpectedly. I think for yeah. more than more than two consecutive days or whatever. It's always like a day here, a day there, you know. And it's like it, it, nothing even worked up to it. Like as you guys said, you know, even with Walt Disney World, they've either been closed like one, two days. I mean, it it went from not one to two days to oh three to four. It went from one to two days to weeks. <laughs> <laughs> And possibly mm-hmm. months. It's like, wow, what what a what a jump. Yeah, so weird. And then it's like, wow, who would ever thought it could happen? All because of a tiny little virus. Terrible. I hate viruses. Well, and, and that's the thing with viruses that really suck is that you know, with a bacterial infection, um, you can just pop an antibiotic and you're for the most part, you're going to recoup with a viral Mm -hmm. thing. There's nothing they can really do about it. So you just kind of have to ride it out and just pray to God that your immune system will (laughs) get rid of it. It's kind of scary. You know, this is like a bacterial thing. It would be a lot less of a problem, you know, Mm -hmm. where's, uh, where's osmosis Jones and Drix when you need them. (laughs) (laughs) Or Ant-Man, he can go in there and kill the Corona. You can just shrink down and kill the Corona. Ant-Man and the Wasp, they can tackle it together. <laughs> oh, man. 
Well, well and, and when you look actually at the, the coronavirus uh, pictures of how it has like the run ball with the little purple. Yeah, a little spike. Little things on it, it actually does look like something in the universe of Ant-Man. Like when they're, they're going into the, um, the uh, uh, what's it called? I'm drawing a blank. The quantum realm. The, the quantum realm. It looks like something that actually did come out of the quantum realm. <laughs> <laughs> come on, Paul Rudd, if you're listening, help us out here. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> well, thank you guys it, so much for. Uh, oh wait, what was it? Rudd. Oh, cut up. Must be my laptop. No, I did not call Paul Rudd. <laughs> oh yeah, Paul Rudd. Yeah, I got to call Paul Rudd. <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. Definitely go follow Chris at OrangeGo55 on YouTube, Twitter, and you don't have, I, can't, I always think you have a Facebook, but you don't, right? Yeah. And then George, go follow George at Disney Family Man on subscribe to his channel and the Grand Circle Tour podcast. Follow him on YouTube, Facebook, and just look, where, they, where can they like listen to it? Like, where can you like listen to the podcast? Like Apple Music? Yeah, you can, you can, yes, you can, uh, Apple podcast, you can listen to it, um, actually on YouTube, we also upload it, it's only audio, audio only, but you can still listen to it on YouTube, if you, uh, search, uh, the Grand Circle Tour podcast. Awesome, well, check them out, and subscribe to the channel, keep coming back for theme park updates, and have a fantastic day.